and then indicate uh, any further update that you, you're wanting to see from after that data collection. So that's where we're headed on the Mendocino Town Plan. Supervisor Dover. Did you say September? Yeah. September. Like several months from now, September. Um, three months from now? It's not that many months. And considering that there's a lot going on in those months. I mean, we're trying to be realistic about what we can do. If, if it gets done sooner, we'll bring it to you sooner. But, but yeah, when, when uh, I discussed this with planning and building as it relates to um, their activities, that was the, the month that we identified that fit with what they're looking for. OK, in terms of the local coastal plan, um, the MCOG funded uh, Route 1 corridor study was completed in June. And you know I think we're all, I'm eager to, to see, get a copy of that and, and to look at that. As far as the board direction has been, come back with a more or less internally staffed version of uh, how you do a local coastal plan update. Um, what I'd like to do is to get our interim manager on board and task that individual with coming up with that plan uh, because I think that that will be a, a more detailed plan than what I'd be able to provide you with in the, in the interim. So that's where we're headed on the local coastal plan, but we know the next thing we need to bring you is an internally staffed, um, as compact as possible, local coastal plan update. Okay. Question. And then there are a couple of other things. Yeah. Question. Um, at our meeting in uh, Fort Bragg mm -hmm. when we were discussing this in, in depth, um, one of the elements that was proposed and I believe passed by the board was the, um, I believe we talked about four um, amendments. Yes. And referring those back to the um, applicants, et cetera. Right. It, where are we with that with in regards to the applicants? Um, okay, well, that's planning and building responsibility, and I believe that they have let people know that if they want to move forward with, with applications, okay. that they can do so and they will be processed by planning and building, okay. and that has led to at least one application coming forward. And okay, saying, good. Who that was the direction of the yeah. board, and, and uh, I want to keep status on that to, sh yeah. to show that... Uh, we did give that direction and it's being yes. followed through, yes. so I appreciate that. The, the other piece of this is you did talk about other uh, coastal counties and just kind of comparing notes, et cetera. And I'm aware that there is a, a coastal counties group that uh, I believe yes. you're participating in and that, uh, you know, I think that will be a, a good connection. And if there's anything that comes out of that, we can certainly fo follow through on that. Yeah, at the, uh, the CSAC legislative conference, there was the initial group hug of coastal counties uh, in regards to um, and in concert with League of California Cities and all those coastal plan updates. And uh, the agenda was, like me, not very long, but it was as long as my arm and we didn't even get to the second item on the agenda. So um, as that situation progresses, as being the CSAC member, you know, I'll be sitting in on those meetings. But then, you know, towards the end of this year, I'm going to be needing to rotate out, and we're going to be looking for a new member on that uh, to keep tabs. Um, this isn't something that's going to be solved in the next month or two. And uh, uh, we heard a good report of San Mateo's coastal update um, from the CSAC president. And uh, as we discussed that day in Fort Bragg, um, they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their coastal plan update and uh, it's languished at the Coastal Commission now for two years without any comment and upon each inquiry they said well the responses are going to be so long that we haven't quite gotten to writing the responses to the need for you to continue to update your update so yeah we're in that catch-22 and, and San Mateo County is a prime example. So that's why we need to stay on top of this. So, Supervisor Delbor. Well, as the chair stated, the agenda was quite long and it, the entire hour plus conversation was centered around the Coastal Commission. 
and it's safe to say we are not alone and the level of frustration is is great amongst the count the coastal counties and they were I don't know if there's anybody that was not represented in there and it was just it's it's huge and there's some ideas and thoughts and being prepared as to for the next meeting as to what might happen but the League of Cities is also doing similar activities it's just the Coastal Commission is out of control and it's clear for all the jurisdictions to the point where um, uh, a discussion item sure Coastal Commission would gladly send representatives of the Commission uh, to attend these meetings coastal counties or League of California cities but um, since we're so poorly underfunded uh, you would be required coastal counties would be required to pay the bill for the attendance of the coastal commissioners so um, that was met with a resounding boo-hoo and uh, um, the demand to go to our legislators to fully fund the coastal commission if you're going to continue to um, enforce these strong arm tactics you're going to have to back it up with state funding and not be looking to the people bearing the brunt um, it was quite an interesting discussion in a short period of time so um, I won't belabor the fact yeah, so but did want to acknowledge that 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 discussion in Fort Bragg encompassed a variety of 